indicator for sustainable mangrove resources management. After the tsunami in Indonesia, so mangrove is uh, one of the key factors. So because uh, early first and second stage of the Akeko, we consider only forest ecosystem. The, after the tsunami, like a terrestrial and mangrove ecosystem. So ASEAN member states mainly like uh, uh, consist of the mangrove ecosystem. So hopefully the Philippines shared with us the experience uh, how can sustainable management. Professor Dijo, please come next. Please speak very much. Okay, so from terrestrial ecosystem, we now go to the mangrove ecosystem. Okay, um, sometime in July 2005 to June 2008, Akeko Philippines uh, implemented the regional research on participatory assessment and evaluation of mangrove forest restoration benefits. And one of the component uh, researches is the development of criteria and indicators for sustainable management of mangroves. The object, we had three objectives. One is to review the existing criteria and indicators for sustainable forest management. Second, that should be second, is to assess the criteria and indicators for mangrove forest. And the third is to validate the criteria and indicators on Banacon Island, Hetafe Bohol. Well, uh, we have here a short definition of what a mangrove forest is. I hope we will not indulge so much on the definition. But according to the Philippines uh, Presidential Decree 705, mangrove is a type of forest occurring on tidal flats along the seacoast, extending along streams where the water is brackish. It is a community of interdiadal plants, including all species of trees, shrubs, vines, and herbs found therein. It is predominated by species from the Rhizophoraceae family. Okay, for our methodology, we have um, selected uh, Banacon Island, Hetafe Bohol, in fact, uh, we have two other, uh, another uh, study site. This is in Palawan, but my presentation today will focus on the Banacon Island. So this is the map of the province of Bohol. This is, yeah, this is the map of the Philippines. You have there the map of the Philippines. And that small dot there is the province of Bohol. So it is located in central Philippines uh, in the Visayan uh, region. Uh, Bohol is the 10th largest uh, island province in the Philippines. It has an area of about 395,000 hectares. And its agricultural land is composed of about 17,000 hectares. And its mangrove area is about 15,000 hectares. The main livelihoods of the people in the province is, uh, are farming and fishing, and it has a population of about 1.2 million people. Bohol, of course, is known uh, as a tourist destination. How many of you have been in Bohol? Oh, okay. So I presume you agree with me that it's a very beautiful area. Of, it is well known for the famous uh, chocolate hills. It's not made of chocolate, but in summer it looks like chocolate. And then, of course, we have the, the famous uh, smallest primate, okay, one of the oldest churches in the Philippines also. And recently, uh, one, another attraction of the province is the man-made uh, mangrove forest. So this is the municipality of Hetafe, which politically uh, covers the island of uh, Banacon. Okay, you have here the whole island of um, Bohol. This is Bohol. And that small island over here is what they call the Banacon Island. So Banacon is, uh, I'm sorry, the municipality of Hetafe, this one, 
is located in the northern tip of Bohol province. Um, it is about 92 kilometers from the capital city of Tagbilaran and its boundaries, um, it is bounded by several uh, municipalities of Buenavista, Talibon, and it is a third income, it's a third class, it's a third class uh, municipality. So the land area is composed of timberland, about 4,000 hectares, A and D, about 14,000 hectares, and uh, it's, it is composed of 24 barangays, because in the Philippines, our geographical, uh, what do you call that? This uh, political subdivision, of course, starts from the province, municipality, and then the barangays. Of the 24 barangays, a planned uh, barangays are five, and then uh, the rest are coastal areas. It has a population of 28 million, uh, 28,000 people. Average growth rate of 2.5 percent. Okay. So I said that is the Banacon Island over here. So. Uh, Banakon Island, of course, got its name from um, banak. It's, it's a kind of fish uh, that is um, prevalent in the area. We call it um, mullet. And um, it is, the island itself is approximately uh, six kilometers from the town, from the town proper. And we can go to the area by riding a pump boat, okay? About a 30 minute uh, ride boat ride. It has an area of about one uh, about 1,775 hectares and uh, the uses include a uh, wilderness area so the island is, uh, is a wilderness area as uh, per presidential proclamation number 2151 dated uh, December 21, 1981 so it's a wilderness area and it is also declared as a marine sanctuary in 2004 There are about 325 households in the island, okay? And the main source of livelihood of the people is fishing, but they have secondary sources like carpentry, tailor tailoring, dressmaking, furniture making, and store keeping. Major problem, of course, is illegal fishing and uh, unemployment. It has an existing people's organization named Banacon Fishery Fisher Falls and Mangrove Planters Association or we call the BAF MAPA. So essentially the people's organi organization uh, was the one who established these uh, man-made uh, mangrove uh, plantations. So um, what we did Essentially, the first step that we did is to review the existing criteria and indicators for sustainable forest management, okay? And uh, of the country or of the Philippines, and these criteria and indicators were patterned after the ITTO CNI. So I hope you're familiar with that. And then uh, our own Forest Management Bureau under the Department of Environment and Natural Resources uh, formulated our own forest management CNIs. So it is composed of seven criteria and 56 indicators. So here is um, the ITTO criteria and indicators. As you will see, there are seven. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the uh, indicators for sustainable forest management. And meantime, this is the Philippine set of criteria and indicators. Basically, we follow the same um, criteria, but we have only 56 indicators. So, uh, what we did is to assess the existing CNI for applicability, applicability for mangrove forests. So we have the Philippines uh, CNI, and there, uh, from there, we thought that uh, we will be able to identify CNI mainly for mangrove forests. So we assessed uh, 35 indicators 
under seven criteria to be applicable to mangrove forest. So from the Philippine CNI of uh, seven indicators and uh, seven criteria and 56 indicators, we only uh, assess for uh, 35 indicators under seven uh, criteria. So we maintain the criteria, but we thought that some of the indicators uh, were not applicable uh, in, in the mangrove forest in Banaco and Bohol, basically because the area is a wilderness area, it's a protected area, and therefore uh, utilization, commercial ut utilization is not allowed on the island. So um, here are the criteria and indicators. So I will not go through them one by one, but for the policy and legal policy, legal, and governance framework. We have 11 indicators. We have four of them here, and then another uh, four here, and then the last three. So all in all, we have uh, 11 indicators for the enabling conditions for sustainable mangrove forest uh, management. For the second criterion, which is extent and condition of mangrove forest, uh, we have identified three three uh, criteria for criterion three mangrove ecosystem health we have identified two criteria indicators, uh, indicators. and then for uh, criterion number four forest production we identified six uh, indicators for criterion five biological diversity we have three indicators for criterion six, coastal resources protection, we have two indicators. For the last criterion, which is economic, social, and cultural aspects, we have, um, sorry. We have eight indicators, okay? So, uh, if we would compare, these are the seven indicators, and then this is the set of Philippine CNI for sustainable forest management, which has 56 indicators. And this is the CNI for sustainable mangrove forest management, which has seven indicators, but 30, seven, in, seven criteria, but 35 um, indicators. So what we did is uh, through focus group discussion, we presented the seven um, criteria and 35 indicators to the members of the people's organization uh, in, uh, in a focus group uh, discussion. Okay. You see some members of the team here, Dr. Calderon, this is Dr. Lenny Camacho, this is of course Dr. Igui over here, <laughs> and then uh, myself. So we, aside from presenting the criteria and indicators to the people or members of the community, we also did an interview with key personnel at the local DENR office, or what we call the Community Environment and Natural Resources Office. So we had an interview with the CENRO, the CENRO and other uh, technical staff of the CENRO office. After, after presentation to the community and to the DNR personnel, the proposed CNI, we tried to uh, validate, we tried to validate the CNI at the community level. So what are the results? The focus group discussion um, showed that uh, all indicators were considered important or very important by the group. When I say group, these are the members of the people's organization and none was recommended for deletion. So they saw the different criteria and indicators as important as far as a management of mangrove forest resources is concerned. Of the 35 indicators, 25 were considered very important, while 10 were considered um, important. With regard to the DNR's perspective, the OIC Centro uh, in the in the Centro office, uh, three foresters 
Uh, one protected area superintendent and the community development assistants um, were interviewed and the respondents rated 12 of the 35 indicators are very important and the rest were important. So only six indicators got one point each for not being a sustainable indicator as far as the PASO is concerned because as I said, the uh, area is a protected area, it's a wilderness area, so utilization is not allowed. Um, so when it comes to the economic, no economic uh, benefits as far as utili utili utilization of the mangroves for commercial purposes, um, it's not a, an important uh, indicator. Okay, so these are the results of the validation. So uh, with regard to the policy and le legal and governance framework, we learned that uh, when the people's organization implement or, or manages the mangrove forest, they follow the provisions of the PD705, this is the Forestry Code of the Philippines, and the People's Organization itself, or the BAF MAPA, has its own set of policies. So they develop their own policies in uh, trying to manage the mangrove uh, resources. But there we found out under economic uh, concern that there is no regular fund for mangrove forest management. So this despite the lack of regular fund for mangrove forest, the people are able to maintain uh, the, the integrity of the mangrove re re uh, resources. This is really based on their voluntary, voluntary work. And uh, of course, they, although they may not be able to utilize the mangrove uh, timber, they benefit so much from the marine products. Of course, we know that if the mangrove resources are healthy, it also follows that the marine resources are like fish, crabs, and other lives are abundant. So here are some of the products that they get from the mangrove um, area. So they have a lot of seaweed there. So they collect seaweed and they uh, sell. Sell uh, seaweed to uh, commercial uh, buyers. They ha also have sea cucumber. There are a lot of clams there, the blue crabs, fish, squid, eel. So a lot of marine, uh, marine products are available. So we see that uh, as far as food no, is concerned, uh, people have not so much problem with uh, food there. So aside from the food products, there are also other products that are that they utilize from the mangrove. So you you see here uh, bundles of firewood. Okay, firewood. Um, they also have uh, charcoal. So when we ask, of course, this is the president. This is the president of the people's organization. When we said, I, we thought that uh, you are not allowed to cut uh, mangroves. So they said uh, they said that part of their policy is that if the people themselves are the ones, for example, this fuel wood, if the, these are not uh, what brought to the outs, outside the island, they are, these are just utilized within the island. Okay, so that means the local people people are the ones benefiting from these uh, resources. Of course, they use the, the mangrove uh, timber for household needs like uh, for their roofing, this one, no? for their roofing, for pens of their animals. They're also used as fences uh, along or around their uh, houses. So you see, um, even though the policy says that there's no cutting, to some extent, the people's organization is allowing the people to use uh, some amount of timber for, for their own, no? for uh, domestic uh, uses only, not for commercial uh, uses. With regard to the institutional framework, uh, we saw that the people's organization has an organized, uh, it is an organized organization, it has its own set of uh, board of directors and they also have committees to implement the different tasks 
in uh, managing the mangrove resources. And of course, they have what we call the community-based forest management agreement as their tenure instrument. So as far as the security of tenure, we can say that uh, they are more or less secured with the, uh, with the tenure that they have. Planning framework, we also found out that uh, during that time, there was no community resource management framework yet. And uh, we said, uh, we learned that uh, the central office is willing to uh, help the people to develop their own CRMF. Extended condition of mangrove forest. So these are the land uses that we uh, found in on the island. Okay. So they have uh, 50 hectares so for wild refuge. So as part of their management, they have already identified the different uh, land uses of the mangrove resources that they have from wildlife refuge, recreational zone, strict protection zone, and sustainable zone, and then you have the multiple use zone. Mangrove ecosystem health, about, we, we, we found that about 5% uh, has been destroyed due to 